Hi friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library, where today we'll be doing my wrap up for the month of March. It is currently April 10th. I am very far behind on videos, uh, but if you've been around, you may know that I had COVID and then I had some kind of a weird stomach bug and then it was a holiday weekend, so I am behind but I'm ready to film some videos for Juice. For my monthly wrap-ups, I typically start at the lowest rated book and work my way up to the highest rated book. This month, that is gonna be true, but there's three books that we're not actually going to rate this month. I will tell you what they are, um, but we're not gonna rate them this month because I am was in the, middle, <laughs> in the middle of a vlog for those books when I got COVID, and there's still one more that I need to read for that vlog. Um, so all of those will be talked about in there. In the month of March, I read a total of eight books, which is a long shot from February's 21, but I was able to read a total of 2,863 pages. 53. 2,853. Uh, which is still really good considering how sick I was. So the books for the upcoming vlog are Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. This is the second book in the Legendborn saga. Um, so again, this will be talked about in a video later this month. Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor and The City of Dusk by Tara Sen. Uh, the other book that will be in that vlog will be The Gifts That Bind Us by Caroline O'Donoghue. I have it right here actually. This guy. Uh, this will be the other book in that vlog. This is the one I haven't read yet. So now we can start with my lowest rated book of the month, which was Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I gave that a 2.25 out of 5 stars. This was our AuthorTube chat book club pick for the month of March. So we read Haunting of Hill House and we watched the Netflix adaptation. Um, so if you want to know more about how I fully felt about that, I will link that video in the description box down below. If you want to know um, like how I felt about the adaptation process of going from the book to the movie. But I did give that a 2.25 out of 5 stars. For me, I respect that it was one of the original creations of a haunted house story. I love haunted house stories, especially Darcy Coates, one of my faves. Um, so I respect that it was like the beginning of the thing, but it was very boring and I didn't really have a lot of love for the characters. So if something was bad was happening to them, I didn't really care very much. Um, I didn't really enjoy the characters and I felt like it was just not creepy enough for me personally. Um, so it was not, it was not my favorite thing. I then have Almond by Wang Pyong Song, which is the Wheatberry Books book club pick for March. This is my local bookstore. Um, we get together and read a book every month. This year we're reading translated fiction. Uh, I gave this a 3.25 out of 5 stars. This is my favorite one we've read so far this year. This book follows our main character Yoon Jae, who has a brain condition that basically um, there's a part of his brain that controls his empathy and his emotions that are not growing um, at the normal rate of other people. So he really has a hard time empathizing and showing emotion or really even feeling emotion. So as he's grown up, his mother and his grandmother have uh, kind of taught him how he should react to things so that people don't think he's quite so weird. Um, there's like notes all over the house, like, you know, you should be doing this or you should be doing that. Um, and they've really taught him how to be emotional and to show emotions even though he doesn't have any. This book starts on Christmas Eve which also is Yoon Jae's birthday and it involves an act of violence that takes away both his grandmother and his mother from him and so he has to figure out how he's going to live in this world where nothing is like really reactive to him. He doesn't really have the emotions. He doesn't not able to grieve properly because he doesn't have a grief emotion. And you can definitely see the differences between, um, I believe this is set in South Korea. So you can see the differences in how uh, South Korea would treat a 16 year old who was orphaned versus how the United States would treat a 16 year old who was orphaned. Um, they're much more left on their own, but also the community itself is more active in his life. The community is raising him. When they say it takes a village in this world, in this country, it really is that, um, which I think is fairly true of all um, well, not all, but a lot of Asian cultures. Um, if you look at like kids in Asian cultures where they are left on their own to their own devices more often, they're able to go out 
um, go to the grocery store, do things that we wouldn't do here. And that's because there, they kind of see every kid as your kid and you should treat them as you would treat your own child. And so if they need help, you help them um, and you're kind to them. I'm not saying that's true for everybody. I'm just saying that that is kind of like a cultural norm. So Yoonjae in the book meets a guy named Gon who he then befriends kind of sort of and Gon tries to uh, Gon has too many emotions. He has all of the emotions and he can't really hold them in. And so he's trying to teach Yoonjae how to feel. And um, Yoonjae meets a girl and he gets a crush, kind of, except not really because he doesn't have the emotions. Um, this book really is all about feelings, emotions, um, whether you have too little or too much, how that can make you behave in society, um, and about figuring out, you know, what is normal and what isn't normal. I did really enjoy this. I just didn't necessarily connect with a lot of like the story structure itself. Um, and that is typically, as I have found through this process of us reading translated fiction, is just the difference between societies. At 3.5 out of 5 stars, we have The Whispering Skull by Jonathan Stroud. This is the second book in the Lockwood & Co series. I wanted to read both books before I started the TV series because the TV series covers books one and two. I haven't started it yet, but I'm excited to uh, when I get a minute. I did enjoy this one, but I don't think I enjoyed it as much as the first one. Um, the world building is really good, and I do like the characters, but I feel like, and, and the plot has like some creepy elements, but I feel like the pacing is really off. And so a lot of times I'm just kind of like lost in the pacing and not really having the best time. So I think that's why it's not my favorite mid-grade. It's not my favorite spooky, but it's definitely good. I think there are things where I could like enjoy it more, but it is what it is. If you don't know what Lockwood & Co is, it is a world where ghosts are fairly prevalent and they can be dangerous to society and only teenagers really can see them, um, even younger than teenagers. Um, most eight and nine year olds who have the sight are recruited to help fight them. They are typically led by an adult who oversees their group. Lockwood & Co, however, is ran by um, Anthony Lockwood, who is like 15 or 16, maybe 17, I don't know. And he is the one who runs their organization and it's him. And I can't tell you the other two people's names, uh, but our three main characters who go out and solve crimes and try to defeat the ghost. By solving crimes, I mean that there, there's usually a crime involved in the ghost because ghosts typically come from angry people who died, people who were, yeah. Anyway, that, I read that. We then have three Brandon Sanderson's to talk about. Uh, the first is The Emperor's Soul, which I gave a four out of five stars. The Emperor's Soul is a short story set in the world of Elantris. Um, it was great. Loved it. Very short. Um, it doesn't really have any of the same characters. At least not any major characters were the same. Um, but it is set in the world of Elantris and it is the... There's a person who has magic to recreate... I don't even know how I want to say this. Basically, like, they can create these stamps that you stamp on the body and then it can change your personality. And the emperor had an accident where he basically was like brain dead. And so they bring this person in to rebuild his personality so that they don't have to overthrow him. It's an interesting read. It was, it was good. I liked it. It was short. It was to the point. It was interesting world building, basically. I then read Firefight and Calamity. Uh, Firefight, I gave a 4.25. Calamity, I gave a 4.5. Um, these are books two and three in the Reckoners trilogy. I love this series so much. Uh, if you don't know, this series follows David, who lives in a society where um, Calamity happened. And when Calamity happened, people started getting powers, but rather than being superheroes, the powers tend to make the people evil. And so society has been kind of run down and taken over and the powered people, the epics as they're known, uh, the epics are kind of like taking over different cities and controlling them. And in the first book, we follow David who's trying to take down the epic who killed his father several years prior. And David is trying to join the Reckoners, which is this group of people who work together to try to, they get rid of more low level epics. They don't really work on the high level epics because it's a lot, very dangerous, um, but they try to do what they can to help out the normal people. Um, and this 
trilogy follows that storyline. I love David. He's a great character. I love our side characters. The ending of Calamity was very interesting. I liked the way that the plot twist worked out. I mean, I read three Brandon Sanderson's out of the eight books I read this month. Was one of them a short story? Yes. However, comma, I had a great time. Um, I did say I was going to read a Brandon Sanderson every month and I think I'm going to take April off because I have been struggling through uh, Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, and because I read two last month, I think I'm going to go ahead and give myself the month and start The Final Empire next month. I might pick it up this month if I make it to the end of the month and I've done the things that I want to do and get through some of the books I want to get through um, for book clubs and things, but um, probably not until next month. Speaking of The Two Towers, if you watched my TBR takedown from last month. You'll know that I was supposed to read that this month in in March and I did not but we'll talk about that in TBR Takedown because <laughs> it's more fun to torture you and make you wait a couple of days until another video. So these are some of the eight books that I read this month. If you have read these and you'd like to talk about them or if you have more questions about them please hit me up in the comments section down below. I will have my Goodreads reviews linked for all of them if you want to know more of my full thoughts look out for the video on the first three books that we talked about coming up probably in the next couple of weeks. If you made it this far in the video, leave me a frog emoji in the comments down below. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!